Hi there, my name is Joycelyn Akufo. I'm the Managing Director of Geek School Tutoring. So Geek School is based in Bromley, Beckenham, Catford and soon to be somewhere in Brockwell Park of all places in Hearn Hill. So a lot of our students come um, for tuition in preparation of the Bexley, Kent, um, some of them do the Sutton selection tests and without forgetting two very popular super selective schools in Bromley, Newstead Wood and St Olaf's and then there's a whole other group of children, sometimes a mix of the same children who continue with us so that they can do uh, independent school um, entrance exams. I was watching the BBC programme on uh, BBC Two and it's called Grammar Schools. Who will get in? I found it very interesting because obviously it's in an area um, that I work in, um, preparing children for tests to get into grammar schools. And I found it even more interesting because it's it, the documentary looked at children who live in the borough of Bexley um, doing the Bexley selection test, which I've just, you know, mentioned that a lot of our students are aiming to get into one of those schools. So what I found interesting is that they, the documentary producers picked two schools within the borough of Bexley, one being a state school, I think it was called Irith, Irith School, and the other one um, was Townley Girls, which is very popular among our parents, along with uh, what's known as Chis and Sid, or Chislehurst and Sidcup Grammar School. So I found it interesting that um, I want to say the focus on the documentary was whether children should be tutored or not. And it's interesting that amongst all the children that they chose, two girls and two boys, the one who had no formal tuition passed. Now, what I found even more interesting is that there is a Daily Mail um, article about this. And the headline is, Pupils who have private tutors are more likely to fail the 11 plus and even a top grammar school head says extra tuition makes children anxious. I would say in my experience that's absolute rubbish. Now when I read through the article um, it's being pitched as if out of those four children um, who were followed in the documentary the one who passed passed with flying colours. Now the pass mark or the selection score required for her to be deemed selective to enable her parents to apply for a grammar school was something like 214 when she sat hers. It changes every year a little bit. And she passed with 216. Some of the other children passed um, maybe 20, 30 points behind and they were seen as, you know, basically tuition had failed them. I want to address this because I find it very, very interesting. As you can imagine, very interesting indeed. Now, one thing that the article in the Daily Mail, um, as well as the documentary episode one um, itself doesn't address, is the fact that all of these children had different levels of support at home. It's not just about the tuition. So the, the young girl who passed, um, and I take nothing away from her score at all, to even get the, um, the pass mark, as it were, to be deemed selective is a fantastic achievement. You know, these exams are not like the SATs exams. They're, they're highly competitive as well. And as has been highlighted in the documentary, um, the passing or failing, you know, whether you phrase that as being selective or non-selective, ultimately the did you get in or didn't can have quite an impact on children, depending on how um, that process is managed at home and in school, in the community and so on, you know, uh, without getting into some of the historical reasons why some local authorities have grammar schools today and some don't and the, um, the perceived impression that if you didn't get into a grammar school, then you just weren't bright 
as a person and that was it, your life was a write-off. Without getting into that, I do find it interesting that at play for each of those children were not looked at in more detail. For example, the one child that passed, her mother had gone to a grammar school herself, which means that she has experience of um, sitting grammar school tests, which she can use to support her child. Now, her daughter was in year six, but she had a daughter in year seven or year eight, clearly recently sat the exam and passed, was in a grammar school. So what I want to say is that the cultural capital of that young girl was significantly different to the other children um, who were um, taking part in the documentary. Tuition is a, a plus, but if you have a parent who has done the grammar school selection test, there's a, a deeper understanding of that experience um, and the level required. Um, what's to say that she didn't buy the books that some of the tutors like myself use to support her daughter to be ready for these exams? What's to say that her older sister didn't help her through any books or papers? Now, the Bexley test isn't just a maths and English um, paper like some of the other grammar schools around the country. For example, if you wanted to, your child to go to Tiffin, Tiffin Boys in Kingston, you know, he would just do maths and English. The Bexley test has reasoning in that, um, largely verbal reasoning, which has lots of codes and things in there and nonverbal reasoning. And one of their uniquenesses is the fact that they try to make the exam or the test preparation proof, tutor proof, however you phrase it, verbal and nonverbal reasoning, as much as their extensions of English and maths, they are not covered by the national curriculum. So in order to make these exams fair to all children, why do these local authorities choose to add another element to it? Uh, it's not just about looking at the cognitive ability. You know, I've had parents who um, are amazed at the fact that their children can even learn how to do um, the codes um, for nonverbal reasoning because they themselves don't understand how to decipher the answer. It's quite interesting um, that the local authority, um, the teachers in the primary schools, and the head teacher that was used from, um, I think he came from Townley itself or from another grammar school in the borough, they suggest that having tuition can make children anxious, which is very interesting to me. And I say that because imagine a child who has never been exposed to nonverbal reasoning, has been used to doing maths and English at school, they're doing a selection test and their first experience of that paper is seeing all these pictures that are very peculiar to them and they're being asked to find the odd one out, you know, find the figure that can be made from another cluster of figures, etc. I think that would make them a lot more anxious, to be honest. And good tuition doesn't make a child anxious. It helps them feel at ease in their knowledge and understanding in readiness for these exams. Having a tutor doesn't guarantee success. So many reasons why a child might not pass these exams. And I'll come back to that if there's time or make another video part two. Um, so I'll go back to the other children. So with the other children, you had uh, a girl who I want to say she's like first generation British. Her mum is Ghanaian. We didn't see dad really, although he's at the home. But she had younger siblings, a young brother um, who sang all night. And the night before her exam, um, according to her, he'd been singing all night. So she found it really difficult to sleep. And so you can imagine the mental fatigue, you know, going into school because she is uh, a Bexley Borough child. She would sit the test at school. Uh, during school time, she must have been exhausted, you know. She didn't fail the exam, you know, 100 marks down or 100 points down. But I really believe that not having a good night's sleep 
can have a huge impact on um, the success of a child's exam paper. And it's something that wasn't highlighted enough. And then you had the other two um, boys um, whose parents had quite a relaxed approach. There, were no, there was no pressure on them um, you know, to push the boundaries and, you know, you must, you must, you must pass, which is great. You know, uh, these exams aren't about pressuring children to feel as if uh, life is over if they fail the exams. Of course not. But they had a very relaxed approach and that can have an impact on whether that child um, pushes themselves some way in uh, reaching their full potential to pass these exams or not. Um, or whether, you know, whether during the paper, if they come across obstacles, whether they fight for that or not, you know, if the, um, if the support at home says that it's okay if you don't pass, you know, you just go in, do what you can, and then we'll just see what happens. That's exactly what the child is going to do. But with, unlike the, the, the young girl who had a sister at a grammar school, and so she also wanted to... Uh, experienced that success so that was a key motivator she'd gone into the school on an open day spoken to some of the existing pupils really soaked in the atmosphere so she had that drive she really wanted to get in plus I'm sure support at home from her sister and her mum it has a huge impact on the chances of success I don't think tutors are failing students in passing these 11 plus exams. I do think that there are a number of issues that can cause a child um, to fail. So I'll give some scenarios. One example is let's say a child who starts tuition um, in year five, maybe in September or a bit later on. And then you find as a tutor that that child doesn't know their times tables. So you can imagine that the teaching of um, maths and some of these reasoning um, topics becomes a challenge. You're moving from one number to the next, let's say seven times nine, and you're explaining how to work through a sequence of working out for a particular maths topic. And that child is still trying to work out whether seven times nine should be 63 or not you know, or they're using their fingers to count, which takes a lot of time. And these exams are about speed and accuracy, you know, so they can have the knowledge in there eventually, but they're not going to be at the same level as a child who maybe knew all their times tables from the beginning of year four and is able to really absorb what they're being taught, you know. So part of that issue is about tra the transparency of some of the tutors. So for me, at Geek School, every single student is assessed. And if I think it's feasible um, to work with the child with a particular amount of time left and get them to a level where they have the strongest chance of being successful, then I let parents know. If it looks unfeasible, and it's not about whether that child is academically able all the time. Sometimes, to be honest, it is. But a lot of the time, it's because there's only a limited amount of time left. You don't want to put undue stress on a child to try and get them to pass a test that they probably won't do well at anyway. So I'm very open. None of the assessments are coded. So parents can see exactly what that child has assessed in. So my business runs on being very honest and transparent to parents. I can't speak for other tutors. I've heard of some that will only allow children um, to sign up if they're basically almost there, you know. At Geek School, we don't do that because it's not adding any value. If a child is ready-made, then what does the tuition do, really? Um, so that's one area. The other area is um, the support at home. So I have come across so many different types of children and their approach. You've got some children who actually don't want to do the 11 plus exams, but it's the parents who want them to do it because they want them to go to grammar school. The perception being that it opens doors for them later on. Um, and, you know, they really want them not to go to the local state school. Then you've got another child who uh, will do it because mum and dad want them to do it and they'll work 
at a good enough pace and you know they'll muddle through and you know eventually they might get that spark of motivation and work really hard and they're fine and then I've seen children whose parents are very very laid back but it's them who want to do it maybe a cousin or a neighbor or some other child that they there that's in their sphere of contact has done well in the grammar school test goes to a good score and they want to have a chance to do it as well you know so it really depends on that child and whether the child wants to do the exams or not um, that can have a huge impact in how well they do another area of concern is things like homework you know is the homework being done i have students who um, often don't do their homework and the parents being working parents or just busy with other responsibilities may not have the time to check that the homework is being done even though there is a constant flow of communication asking them to just check that the work that's been set has been done and then you've got children who are actively always doing the homework they come to lessons ready with questions about um, how to do questions in their books or on papers that they found really difficult. You know, you can see already that each of these children have a different drive. Of course, categorically, that is going to have a huge impact on their chances of success. Challenge,